What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for October 4th, 2022. If you didn't hear the news yesterday, we are officially available wherever you get your podcasts. So be sure to subscribe and like so that way the content gets delivered right to your inbox. I will still post the videos on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, as well as Facebook and Instagram. But now if you're more of the podcast and you were enjoying Back to the Future, you're going to be able to get this mini, or I guess they call it micro podcast, wherever you get your other podcasts. Made sure everything was set up yesterday, so go check that out. Well, the Phillies did it. I, I got to be honest, I did not think it was going to happen. I had my doubts. All of those, maybe doing these This Day in Philly history the, of the September collapses sort of stuck in my mind, but... Kind of had my doubts, but here we are. They, Aaron Nola pitched like an ace yesterday. Granted, I don't know how how much the, the Astros, their effort was there, but it doesn't matter. We won. They are now, they've clinched the, the third wild card. They're only a game behind the Padres, but now that we've clinched, this is where we can get a little greedy, I guess you could say. Um as it stands right now, the Phillies would go to St. Louis this weekend to play the Cardinals in a three-game series. The Mets are now one game behind the Braves, I think. So what we don't want to have happen, based on the way the season played out, is we don't want to have the first-round series against the Mets. And I'm very content right now to just stay in that third wild-card spot and play the Cardinals, who this the Phillies did play well this year. So... Something to keep an eye on. I mean, again, we're in, so that to me is the number one thing. And, and eventually, if you want to win the title, you can. You have to meet the Mets anyway. But I don't want to get too far into how I think they're going to do. Do they have a shot? Absolutely. I mean, I've seen this play, team play some very good baseball this year. But at the same token, they played some very bad. So it, to me, it depends on which team shows up. I'll get more of an in-depth preview later this week before the the first game but back to this day in philly sports history so on this day october 4th 1987 the eagles and i put that in quotes and i'll get to a reason why in a minute lost to the bears 35 to 3 in front of roughly 4,000 fans at the vet The reason why I put it in quote and there was only 4,000 fans at the game was this was the first game the NFL played that season with replacement players. The NFLPA went on strike after the games in week two, so week three games were canceled. Uh, The the owners decided to bring in replacement players who were like ex-USFL, Canadian, guys that were early round roster cuts because I think a lot of those Borderline guys that were like the last cuts in the training camps did not want to to cross the picket line and play. So their biggest argument that they were fighting for was free agency and more pension money. So very similar things that that we see today. Um, This sort of laid the groundwork for the free agency as we know it because what it did was it led to plan B free agency which worked sort of like a an expansion draft where you could protect a certain amount of players and then the rest were free to sign. Usually those were guys that were not starters, they were aging veterans and things like that. But the NFL did play weeks four through six with replacement players that year. And it definitely was interesting because not all players sat out. So the Eagles were one of the few teams, and I think Washington was the other, where every single player on that team, they stuck together. And I think Philly, being a big union town, played a role in that. However, of course, the Dallas Cowboys, shocker, they had a lot of their starters come back. So they were actually winning games that, obviously the games counted, but for them, they, they had a bigger vision and a bigger picture in mind, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I have more on that later on because of the way Buddy Ryan handled that. I just remember that I was disappointed because this was the first year I started to really watch football. It was the first Miller Lite handbook I had, so I was trying to to fill in those scores, and I just remember putting a big X on the page for week three and put strike, 
And then I remember, and then part of it was because it was such a big story and the, the players didn't want, obviously, the, the uh, scabs or the strike breakers to uh, play. But And I, I know my dad was a union, steel worker, steel worker union member and things like that. But I just remember being so disappointed and making sure that I wrote the word scab on top of those pages just so... I knew looking back, I, I wish I had those books, by the way, but I knew looking back that those weren't the real games. But like I said, more on the strike as well as the whole Dallas Cowboys situation later on on future episodes of both this and Back to the Future. Speaking of Back to the Future, new Back to the Future coming probably tonight. We're going to look back at that 1993 season when Randall and Fred Barnett both got injured after that week four win. More Phillies focus is coming up the month of October. Now that they clinch a playoff spot, I'm able to to really focus on some of them and not feel disappointed. So be on the lookout for that. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok, Jimbo underscore Mont. Instagram at Jimbo KU. Make sure to like and subscribe to both podcasts so they come to your inbox. This one will be, like I said, usually two to five, maybe a little bit over minutes a day. Just a quick recap of this day in Philly sports history. The Eagles, quote unquote, lost to the Bears 35 to three on this day in 1987. Congratulations to the Phillies. Go have yourselves a Tuesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see it.